Hi, this is Pam, Flower Patch Farmhouse, and today I'm going to share how I paint some funky, fun little chickens on these pieces of wood. These could be used. These are five and a quarter, five, almost five and a half square. I cut them out of a one by six pine board and sanded the edges down and sanded lightly on the surface. I did a wash on it of dove gray. This is folk art um, multi-surface in dove gray and then I have the pattern of my chicken copied onto the surface. This I let the background of course dry before I did that and now I'm going to paint Miss Chicken. I'd done the whole rooster and I checked and I hadn't turned my sound on so I'll have to redo him after I do the hen. Now on my palette I have um, tomato spice. These are all plaid folk art with um, plain uh, folk art paint, as well as the multi-surface. Um, here is tomato spice, cardinal red. This is linen. This is the, um, what is that one? Teddy bear tan? Uh, might not be. I'll have to look again. Um, oh, butter pecan. And then that's the yellow ochre, white, and berry wine and burnt umber. The burnt umber and the berry wine are probably just going to be shadow colors. Uh, I'll use that for the feet and the beaks and I will switch up the colors of the chickens and share what I do on each one. This is uh, one of the hens. I have two hens to paint and I'm going to start by doing her waddle and her comb and I'm going to start with the uh, tomato spice. It's kind of a almost a brick red and then I can brighten it up afterwards with some of the um, cardinal red and I'm just filling in just like you would a coloring book picture with my brush and then I'll come back in and add highlights and shadows later and I kind of lost her little bump there but it doesn't matter each one will always turn out different now to do I've got a glop on there. I need to get that off. Her waddle. This brush is a Royal Majestic 4250 number three. I think I got this in a detail pack off of Amazon. And I am just filling in her waddle. And I will let that dry. And I will do her beak. This is yellow ochre on the same brush. I'm pulling it through and got a little bit too much water on there. Trying to load it so it doesn't have too much in it. So I can use the tip carefully. Okay, there's her beak. And now I'll do her legs which is just an upside down Y, nothing fancy. Like I said, these are just fun little funky chickens. I'm going to start filling in over here. I'm going to be careful there because I'll drag red into it because I'm just sloppy that way. And I'm using now a number eight or number 10 flat plaid one stroke by Donna Dewberry brush. Um, these are very inexpensive. They come in a set, which I have a link to on my website and uh, they work really well at least for what I use them for. I am going into linen to fill in on her body and I'm just going to follow the lines. I'm not going to be too terribly careful. Now when I transferred the design on here I was very careful to make my lines very light because it's hard to cover them with light colored paint if you don't get make sure they're nice and light. Um, I could have done them with white transfer paper, which would have worked, but you might not have been able to see it because it would have been really light on here. Now I'm just following and turning it as I need to to get my design filled in. And just now, I'll try to carefully go around. I know some of that's still wet and I could easily get red into my white, which isn't the end of the world. I could just go over it, but I'm trying to be fast here. Okay, so 
There's Miss Henny Penny. Now we will let her dry. And then I can come in and do a little bit of shadowing and highlighting on things and um, do another coat <coughs> on her body. Now while we're waiting for her to dry, I will go get a rooster again. Well, I can show you Mr. Rooster. He's not quite dry, but it was the same basic steps. So here he is. I did him in the butter pecan and eh, still a little damp. So I am going to now double load my brush into, so what I mean by double load is dip one corner in each color. My butter pecan's kind of gotten dry there, so I need to throw some more on my palette. Okay, yeah, but there it is, butter pecan. <clears throat> and so there's the butter pecan, dip one side. And then I blend it on my palette. You see how you have the two colors? Colors, they're not too starkly different. They're kind of close, but that's fine. That's what we want. Now I'm going to lead with the lighter color, drag with the darker. And if you're not getting the contrast you want, then feel free to put in maybe a little bit darker color. And you see how I just did his tail. I just drug on the chisel edge pressed a little bit and then lifted so it came up to a point on his tails and that way you're getting and I have some of the underneath color showing through which is what I want. I'm going back and I'm double loading again and blending on my palette just like I showed you and then I'm going to with the pecan, butter pecan side on towards the outside I'm going to Go around the outside. You see how it's leaving two colors? A light and a dark. The light is in the center. And I'm going to turn my work so it's comfortable. And I'll just drag. I'm just going to follow kind of like his body shape. And you'll see I have some shadowing along the bottom. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to do his wing. Now it might be dry enough, it might not. Let's see. I'm going to do it on the chisel edge. I dipped some more in the butter pecan, kind of blended on my palette. And now the, the back side here of my brush on the chisel edge has the butter pecan color. So I'm just going to kind of swoop there. And though it's not really um, a stark contrast, it's enough to give you the indication of a feather there or, or a wing. And I can still see some of the carbon, not carbon, but graphite line there. So we're going to leave him be. I don't know what's on there. Anyways. And if I decide I need some more um, shadowing or highlighting, I'll come back later. Now I have my round brush again. This is my number three round. Uh, and I'm going to come back into the... Um, tomato spice. It's got some chunks in it. I need to get, and I, cause I noticed this back edge was kind of not working well. And I'm going to, now I'm going to go, I'll wipe it out. I'm not going to bother rinsing it. And I'm going to go into the cardinal red, which is a brighter red. And I'm just going to kind of go in the centers of his waddle with that. And then I did dry brush off uh, dry clean it, meaning I just wipe it on a rag to get most of that paint out. And I'm going to go into my um, berry wine. And I'm just going to kind of go along the bottom next to his head. Kind of along the back side here. Maybe a little bit towards that split there. Not a lot, just touching it in there. And then I'm going to come along his waddle here with that berry wine. Kind of accent that back side. I'm going to my rag. I'm wiping out my brush again. I'm going back into the cardinal red. And I'm going to highlight towards the center. And now I'm going to let that dry. Now, acrylics dry darker 
than when you put them down. So you can expect that to darken up about a bit. Now when it has darkened, um, I will decide then whether I want to highlight some more, change things up, go over the shadow. Maybe I don't like it in sp spots. So all right, now I'm going to take a look and see where I might want to shadow some more on his tail. Now these are all optional. You could leave them as he is if you wish. But um, I think I want to go into, I'm going to load some of my butter pecan on my brush. On this, this is the still around brush. I could use my flat brush for this. So I got the butter pecan and I'm just going to put a tiny bit of burnt umber in there. And my burnt umber is drying on my palette because I'm taking too long. But usually I don't put them out on my palette until I'm ready to use them. And burnt umber is notorious for being kind of thick anyway. So I've kind of blended it into with the butter pecan to give it a little bit darker color. And I'm just going to come in here and kind of go along the bottoms of those tail feathers. And if I don't feel like I had enough of a point on the back end of a feather, which they're all feathery anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's super pointy, but then I would just kind of darken it that way. And if I wanted to, I could just lightly come along underneath that wing to kind of shadow underneath that wing spot. Now I'm going to go over the yellow ochre parts one more time just because yellow ochre too is one that is not super opaque. And if I want it, I can still see some of the um, graphite pa paper, graphite lines through there. So there, I've got that done. I had a little bit too much water in there so it looks like it's running but be careful not to do that. Have too much water in your brush. Now because um, I figure he's pretty much done I'm going to go in. I just when I just need a touch of black I just go in and open the lid and then touch the tip of my brush. Now I I'll show you this. Let me get this. When I got the black, because this isn't a super pointy brush, I roll it and make that tip very pointy. I don't know if you can see that, because I, but that's what I do, just that way I don't get his eye way too big. And there we go. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's raining outside. And there is his eye. Yeah, his beak ran, but it'll be fine. I can outline that maybe with a little darker, like with a burnt umber or a burnt umber mixed with the yellow ochre to give the beak more definition because it ran. Or I could just leave it and just call it good. Okay, let's go back to Miss Henny Penny. Let me get back a little bit. So we're going to go back in and we're going to add some detail to her body. I want to keep her lighter than Mr. Rooster. So I'm now going into the linen, linen, which I need to reload some on my palette, and then into the white. So I want her tail to be, have the white fluffy ends. And I'm going to turn it as I go around to keep it comfortable. I didn't get all the way over there. That doesn't matter. Uh, let me see. I've got more paint on this side of my brush. So this is back to my number eight flat that I was using earlier. And then I just fill in. doesn't matter if it's streaky because that just gives it the feathery look. And then I just come around this way. The same. And then I'll gently go around her face. And it has almost a wing look there, but I'm going to go into more stark white. And I'm just going to add her wing, a definite wing there. And let's see, kind of blend this in. It's kind of, 
And if I thought I got too much, too much white in here, I just kind of blend some more linen in. I want to turn tail a little rounder. Okay, now I'll get my round brush again and I will add her highlights and shadows the same on the waddle and comb as I did with Mr. Rooster. Now, I think I want to do a little bit more of the, this is the tomato spice, which is getting thick on me. I didn't realize the air was so dry in here. Let's get the tomato spice going. And I dry wipe out my brush on my rag and then I get the cardinal red. And I can add some cardinal red. I got a little too much of my brush. Wipe some out right in the center and I'll do the waddle too. Dry wipe my brush out and I go into the berry wine. Now you could also shadow with the burnt umber if you wanted to. along her head and it's not laying down because that other color is so thick and still wet but I'm getting it in there. Now I defined part of her comb there with the shadow because I had lost an edge and so that works as far as helping to define it and uh, that's good. Now I'm going to dry out my brush this time so I don't wipe out her beak. So I got it dry, I got it made sure my brush has a good point on it by twirling it on the palette with the paint. Now I'm just going to come in and do her beak. Same here on her feet. Now I'll do the same for her eyeball. Let me see, do I have some black on my palette? I do. Making sure it got all the water out so we don't give her a big fat eyeball. And there's her little eye. And there we have my chicken. Now I noticed that some of the graphite line, uh oh, almost gave her a black base there. Gotta watch mixing your colors on your palette. Okay, so I'm gonna come along underneath her and I have some linen and some white on my brush. Touch a little bit of berry pecan, that way I could give her a little bit of shadow down here. And it covers that. And if you wanted to shadow a little bit under her wing, you could do that with the burnt umber. I would lighten it a little bit with linen and blend it well on my brush and then just lightly come along underneath the wing. Give it a little detail. Now if you wanted to give them shadows, so give them a little more dimensional look, I would uh, mix some floating medium, uh, uh, put it on my palette and I would dip my brush in it and I would get a little bit of burnt umber and I would blend it out until it was very see-through and then I would come along the edge underneath and maybe behind and that would give her a little more dimension. And I don't know what I'm going to put behind them. I could leave them that way or I can put flowers or some, something, but I'll leave that. I got one. Alrighty, on this hen, I think I wanna make her kind of like a Rhode Island red. So I'm using a color called Pueblo and I'm going to just fill in with the number 10 flat brush again and I'm going to just follow the outline where the graphite paper left when I transferred it. Now this is a very orangey almost terracotta color and I may hate it and I can always go over it with another color if I decide I'm not pleased with it. Rhode Island reds are kind of a reddier color, darker color than this, but we're going to go with it. Okay, I almost lost where my 
can't see very good. I don't have it. I didn't want to get the graphite lines too dark. I'm just following along as best I can. Now this hen, she's leaning down to peck something on the ground. So that's why she's at a different angle. And I think that's good on that color. Okay, now I'm going to rinse that out as best I can. And set it up here and go back to my round brush for the details as before. Here is, I'm going into the um, tomato spice for her waddle. Filling in the paint. I need to spritz my palette that's getting thick and gloppy from drying out as I'm working. Doesn't want to spread very well. I can just get new paint too, not worry about spritzing it. Okay, you see how she's leaning down there? I don't know what I'll put down there. I could put watermelon, I could put little specks of like corn. Let me see how my, yeah, my yellow ochre is doing fine. Okay, I'm loading my brush, and again, I'll show you how I twirl it so it comes to a point. That way, I know. I'm going to be able to detail it without getting it too gloppy. And then her little feet. Legs and feet. This one she's going to have two because she's not just standing to the side. Whoops, got that a little thick. But that works. And there is her basic outline. I'm going into the cardinal red, kind of blending some water into it from the rinsing bucket so that it thins it a little bit. It's also getting thick from sitting here. And just some highlights of the brighter red. Dry it out, go into the berry wine. I get a little water because it's getting dry too. And that way it'll blend a little easier if it's not too thick. Okay, looks like I got it. Go along the back side of her waddle. And I will let her dry a bit before I try to come in and shadow, put her wing in, and a highlight. And this is another Mr. Rooster. I think this rooster I am going to make black. And I have, let me see what black is this. This is charcoal black, which I also use licorice or other blacks. And I am just going to do the same as I did on the other rooster and just follow the outlines. Now this one has a hood and his hood I think I will do in a different color or with a blend. And his hood comes down over top of that spot there. So I'll just let this dry. And then now my black copper Morans have a blend of black with copper color in it. So I could kind of go in with a double load. 
Hmm, I don't know if I'd like that. No, yeah, we'll try it. We're going to come in with the black and copper. And that undercoat isn't dry yet, so if it was dry, I could get it a little more. Let me put a little more black in this. So you kind of get the streakiness, like my black copper morans would have. And I can go over that with the second coat to make it look much better. And you, a lot of times their tails too have some iridescent blue in it. So I can go in and do that after it dries. I'm going to do a swaddle and comb now. Same way I've done all the others. Start with the tomato spice and follow the outline. I kind of lost the definition there. I got too going too fast, but I can put that back in with my berry wine, which it is gloppy. I keep saying that and I don't take the time to change it. But you see how I am kind of pulling in my lines or the definition defining waddle with. He's rocking that comb there. Okay, more of the tomato spice for his waddle. Go in with the cardinal. It's still wet. I can let it dry or I can just go in there and kind of blend with the cardinal. Once it dries, you can see what you need to do to define it. And here we go again with the yellow ochre. He's kind of looks like he's crowing a bit, so make his mouth look open. And then his leg. And so he needs to dry now before I go any further. Back to the leaning down henny penny here. I am going back into some of my Pueblo and then I'm going to my, if I remember, it's been a while since I had them. Rhode Island Reds had some black on the ends of their tails. So I'm going back into Pueblo and the black, I'm using the black to give her some definition on the back of her tail feathers. And I'll kind of blend it down in there like that. And then I'm going to get more. I might do the burnt umber down there. My burnt umber keeps drying some fierce. Okay. Now if I didn't want it to be quite so dark, I could have done the tail with the burnt umber too. And it it would have made it nice and dark. There's her wing. And if I decide I don't like, I think that black is too dark, I'll come back in with more of the Pueblo and go back over it, which I do think it needs some more Pueblo in there. And I rinsed out most of that brush. Load up with some fresh Pueblo, kind of go back over it. It doesn't cover the black completely, but it does tone it down, which is what I'm going for. And I kind of get a little far out there. You see how I wing it a good part of the time and just play with the paints and see how I like the colors I'm going for or getting. And I can always go in with a little yellow ochre mixed with my Pueblo. Give her a little bit of highlight above the wing. A little highlight along the back. 
And if I wanted to highlight around her face a little bit. Got a little bit on her comb, but that's okay. We can. Now if you wanted to make it look more like feathers, you could do a chisel stroke where you just stroke, stroke, stroke on there with the chisel edge. I'm going to give her an eye. Use my pointy brush and a little black. And there. Oh, it looks like her beak and feet can use a little touch more. Oh, drats. I had too much water in there again. Well, let me see. Where's a little rag? I'll show you how I fix that. A lot of times I'll have Q-tips handy, but I'll just go in and absorb it back up with a rag. Q-tip is you can get more detail line in there. But I'm often a sloppy painter. Okay. Put some more red on the her comb. Go over that little spot that I messed up. And there I did it again. Too much water in my brush. It's actually it's on the up above the ferrule onto the handle and it runs down if I'm not careful and get it wiped off good. And there you have it. You can kind of darken some colors that you like. And there's Miss Henny Penny. All right, back to our black rooster. Now I went and found a color called Ink Spot. It's a super dark blue. And I'm going to double load my number 10 flat with the black and the Ink Spot. And I'm just going to work it in together. This black does not seem to be an opaque black. I may switch over to a licorice black if I have one. Let me see if this one will work. Make it a little more opaque. Yep, that one works. Okay. And I'm going to lead with the black. And you can I can see the blue. I'm not sure if you, you're catching the blue, but it's blending, it's streaking in, which my Black Cup of Moran roosters, when I have them, do have the blue in the tail. It's very dark and really shows up in the light. Well, let me go this way with it that way. I'm getting more of the blue. Got the black tainting it too much. If I would have drug it this way, the black would have been in the front because your trailing color is the one you leave more of. And But the black in front of the blue would have been um, tainting the blue. So going back this way, the blue is dragging. I hope that made sense. But And even though I still have blue in my brush, I'm just going into the black mostly now and just working it in and I am going to do the second coat of black on here and I will dip it a corner into white to get I want to put the wing in or indication of wing now this this isn't dry so when I go in to do a bit of brown I'm not sure what I want to do with that do I want to do the black see his little cap isn't going to show if I do the black so I have the brown mixed in or the copper color now I could go with a, a contrasting, a better contrasting color. I have to decide what that is. Maybe the butter pecan with the black. The copper just didn't cut it for me. So, yep, I'm liking the butter pecan better. And if I want to make this more like a, a Dominecker or a... Um, 
barred rock. I could put little white dots on it or I could mask out the rooster and then do some fly specks. I could still do some fly specks and keep them real close to it and um, create the speckled look if I wished. Let me see. I think I'll go in with his black eye. I'll go in with the other black that's more opaque. Now I had lost the definition in his comb, so I'm going to go in with the cranberry wine, not cranberry wine, berry wine. And right along his head will be darker. And my berry wine is not showing up there. Now if I wanted to, to kind of counteract the lack of definition in his comb, it's wet right now, so it probably won't work, but I could do what's called negative painting. I could come back in with the background color. And I'm going to try that right now, see if it'll work. It may be too wet, but where it's supposed to be have a V, I can use the background color and create that V. So it looks like it's got, and I can come in and redo the comb over top of that background color and it'll repair that. So I'll let it dry and I will come back and do the outline of his comb a little bit more. I can do some more of the, I can still highlight a little in the middle since I won't be touching the background color there. And there is basically our second rooster. I'm not sure what backgrounds I'll put on these. So I'll just, I could just leave them as is and have them be done. Let me see, let me show them all four together. Let me put them all here. And if I'd been smart, I would have pointed him the other way. I think I already said that, but let me get back. And there are our hens and roosters, little squares. They could be coasters, trivets, or you can stand them on, a, on end and have little shelf sitters. I hope you liked it.